Right, we're joined now by Jamie O'Hara to discuss all of the day's transfer news. Hi there, Jamie. Obviously, we're going to start with Cristiano Ronaldo. He's having talks with Eric Ten Hag today. Whew, how does this one end? Well, it's a, it's a strange one because obviously there's been loads of talk of him leaving the football club. Um, I think maybe he's realised that he's not as sought after as he probably thought. And, um, you know, clubs have maybe looked at it and gone, not for us, not for us. I thought he might have gone to Chelsea, but that doesn't look like it would happen. PSG, I thought that might have been one that would go, but doesn't seem to be panning out for him. So, look, he's still a Manchester United player. He'll have to go in now, have talks. And, and see what the future holds. And look, he was Man United's top goal scorer last season. So it's not like he's a bad player and a bad egg in the dressing room. He's still a massive player for, for whatever club he'll play for. It's just whether Ten Hag sees him playing week in, week out in his side. Does Ten Hag, do you think he needs to set the right tone with Ronaldo? Does, does, he, does he lay down the law or how does he approach this one with, with such a, you know, he's such a huge name, isn't he? Yeah, I think, look, the manager's come in, pre-season looks to be going quite well for Manchester United. Martial's come back into the fold and he looks, you know, decent again. You can see the way they're trying to play football and the, the discipline that he's trying to put into their tactics. And I think straight away, Ten Hag's going to have to say to Ronaldo, it's my way or the highway. You know, I know he's a huge player. He's a world-class player, um, but he wants to do it his way now. And this is a new Manchester United team, which is going to be fresh under this new regime. And... Ronaldo's got to get on board with it. And I think that's the difficulty that managers have had in the past with him is because he's such a big player on and off the pitch. He can be quite difficult to deal with, not because he's a bad egg, but just because of the player um, and what he brings to the table. Him there uh, arriving with his, his uh, agent a short time ago. The other thing that surprised us was the arrival of Chris, um, Sir Alex Ferguson yeah. ahead of these talks. What do you make to all of that? Well, I've, look, Sir Alex Ferguson is the, the person that kind of built Ronaldo to what he is. I think he was the guy who tried to get Ronaldo back to the football club. He still has a huge say in what happens at Manchester United. And I think he's going to want to, you know, be involved in the talks if there's issues. Because, you know, I think Ronaldo looks up to Sir Alex Ferguson. I think he knows him. He trusts him. And I think, you know, he can be the guy that is the go between between him and the manager and they can figure out what's what's best for the future for the football club because you know everyone wants to see Manchester United back on top because they're a huge football club and they're great when they're you know when they're winning it's good to see them doing what they do but you know it's been a bit of a nightmare for them over the last few seasons Ronaldo last season was a top scorer but the team was a shambles and I think this season now Sir Alex Ferguson might go in and say look Ronaldo this is what we've got to do you, you, you you're going to be part of it you're not going to play every week but you've got to do it Ten Hag's way, and he needs to figure out now, Ronaldo, whether he wants to be part of that. Mm. Staying with Man United, I mean, they continue to pursue Frankie de Jong. Uh, should they just move on now? Forget this move one? Move on. Move on, Hayley. It's, it's, it's been a joke. You know, it's, it's almost embarrassing now that they're still trying to pursue it. If it hasn't happened now, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, this is Manchester United we're talking about, one of the biggest clubs in the world. And I know they don't have the biggest pool anymore because of the way the club's gone. But, you know, if a player's still turning around saying, I don't want to leave, I want to be at Barcelona, and, you know, they're messing around with trying to sort out the wages that he's owed, just move on from it. There's plenty of other top-class players out there that you can sign. And, you know, you don't want a player ended up coming to the football club almost against his will, in a way. And that's... I mean, that doesn't set... That doesn't sit right with me. You know, player... If, if Manchester United phoned me when I was in my prime, and a lot of players would say the same, you're on the plane. Next day, I'm going Manchester United. Now, if a player said, no, I don't want to go, then, all right, we'll see you later then. We'll, we'll get someone else. There you go. Uh, right, we want to ask you about your old club, Tottenham, obviously. I mean, great business on paper, but some very interesting comments regarding Harry Kane from Julian Nagelsmann. What did, what did you make of those comments? I thought it was disrespectful, to be honest with you. Um, he's not for sale. Um, you know, I know managers are going to get asked about players, but he's, he's not your player. He's a great player. He's not your player. He's, he's a Spurs player. Um, he's going to do great things next season. I think, you know, with Conte now, with the players that we've got, the way we want to play, I can see Harry Kane being top goal scorer next season in the Premier League. I think he's going to be electric. And... You know, I don't like managers that come out and say, yeah, you know, yeah, we'd love to have him and he'd score goals and he'd do this and he'd do that. We ain't for sale. Simple as that. Give us 200 million and you can have him. If not, don't talk about our players.
There you go, that's him told. Uh, <laughs> right. What about behind the scenes? I suppose. I mean, lots of changes as well. Um, you've got your old teammate, Jermaine Defoe, in advance talks to take up a coaching role. What, what do you make of mm -hmm. sort of the things that they're trying to implement behind the scenes, particularly with the academy? Well, look, Spurs has got one of the best academies now in the world. You know, I joined there when I was 17 and it was a, a very good academy at the time, but it was still behind the likes of Arsenal and Man United. But now Tottenham have got the facilities um, they, and what they do is they look after old players. I know there's a lot of old Spurs players now that are a part of the coaching staff, ones that haven't even played in the first team. And I think that's great that, you know, they try and keep that um, sort of love for the, for the club in and around it, people know what it's about. You know where you're going with it. Jermaine Defoe would be, you know, I think superb to have at the football club. Get him in. Uh, young players look up to him. And then he can graft his his skills as well. And, you know, I, I think the way the club's being run at the minute and the way we're moving forward with everything that's going on, it's one of the best clubs in the world. It really is. It's a fantastic club. Facilities, staff. Now you've got the manager. Now we've got the squad. Could be a really exciting season for Tottenham. Mm. A bit premature, very quickly. As it stands, with a month to go until the window shuts, who makes your top four? You've got 30 seconds. Oh, God. I mean, Man City, I think, are going to run away with it this season. Liverpool second. Spurs are going to finish third. And Arsenal are going to finish fourth. Oh. Chelsea are out of the top four, going to finish fifth. Oh, we'll get more on you on that, I'm sure, in the coming weeks. Just wanted to put you on the spot there, Jamie. But yeah. thank you very much indeed.